Today's topic is random variables. Random variables are an absolutely fundamental concept in probability theory, but before we get into officially defining them and so on, let's start off with an example that in fact is a game because that's a fun way to start. So we're going to play the bigger number game and here's how it works. Uh, there are two teams and team one has the task of picking two different integers between uh, 0 and 7, inclusive, and they write a one integer on one piece of paper and the other integer on the other piece of paper. They turn the two pieces of paper face down so the numbers are not visible, and the other team then sees these two pieces of paper uh, whose other side has numbers, written, different numbers written on them sitting on the table. What team two then does is picks one of the pieces of paper and turns it over and looks at the number on it. And then, based on what that number is, they make a decision, stick with the number they have, or switch to the other unknown number on the face down piece of paper, and that'll be their final number. And the game is that team two wins if they wind up with the larger number. So they're gonna look at the number on the paper that they expose, and they're gonna try to decide whether it looks like a big number or a little number. If it looks like a big number, they'll stick with it. If it looks like a little number, they'll switch to the other one that they hope is larger. So which team do you think has an advantage here? Um, if you've, of course, if you've read the notes, you know, but if you haven't been exposed to this before, it's not really so obvious. Um, and uh, what we encourage and what we used to do when we ran this in real time in class is that we would have uh, students in teams split their team in half. One would be team one and the other would be team two. And they play the game a few times, see if they could figure out uh, who had the advantage. And if you have the opportunity, this might be a good moment to stop this video and try playing the game with some friends if they're around. Otherwise, let's just proceed and see how it all works. So this is the strategy that team two is going to adopt. Um, they're going to take this idea about big and small that I mentioned and, uh, uh, and act on it in a methodical way. So they're going to pick a paper to expose, giving each paper equal probability. So that guarantees that they have a 50-50 chance of picking the big number and a 50-50 chance of picking the little number. Whatever ingenuity team one tried to do on which side of the piece of paper, which piece of paper was on the left and which was on the right, it doesn't really matter if team two simply picks a piece of paper at random. There's no way that team one can try to fake out team two on where they put the number. Okay. Um, the next step is that team two is going to decide whether the number that they can see, the exposed number, is small, and if so, they switch, and otherwise they stick. So that is, they're going to define some threshold z, where being less than or equal to z means small, and being greater than z means large. And the question is, how do they choose z? Well, a naive thing to do would be to choose z to be in the middle of the interval from 0 to 7. Let's say you choose z equals 3. Um, so there would be uh, three numbers, uh, four numbers less than or equal to z and four numbers greater than z. But of course, as soon as team 1 knew that that was your z, what would they do? Well, they would make sure that both numbers were on the same side of z. If your z was 3, they would always choose their numbers to be, say, 0 and 1. And that way, uh, when you were switching, your z would tell you that you had a small number, you should switch to the other one, and you'd only have a 50-50 chance of winning. So if you fixed that value of z, team two has a way of ensuring that you have no advantage. Uh, you can only win with probability 50-50. And that's true no matter what z you take. If team one knew what your z was, they would just make sure to pick their two numbers on the same side of your z and then uh, your z wouldn't really tell you anything. You'd switch or, or stick in both cases, and you'd only have a 50-50 chance of picking the right number. So what you do, and this is where probability comes in, is you pick z in a way that can't be predicted or made use of by team one. You pick z at random to be any number from 0 to 7, not including 7, including 0. That is, your number is either 0, 1, 2, up through 6. And being less than or equal to z means small, and being greater than z means large. And when you see a small number, you'll switch, and when you see a, a large number, you'll stick. But what's going to be large and what's going to be small is going to vary uh, 
uh, each time you play the game, depending on uh, what random number z comes out, comes out to be. So let's analyze your probability if you're a team two. What's the probability that you're going to win now? Well, um, let's suppose that team one picks these two numbers. We don't know what they are, but they have to pick a low number that's less than a high number. So these two numbers are at least one apart. They can't have the same number on both pieces of paper. Otherwise, it's clear that uh, uh, you uh, are not going to be able to pick the larger one. That would be cheating. Okay, so there's two different numbers, so one of them has to be less than the other. We don't know how much less might be very, a lot less might be only one less, but low is less than high. Okay, now we can consider three cases of what happens with your strategy. The most interesting case is the middle case. That is when your z, which was chosen at random, happens to fall in the interval between low and high. That is your z is strictly less than high and greater than or equal to low. And then in that case, your z is really guiding you correctly on what to do. If, if you turn over the low card, then it's going to look low because it's less than or equal to z, so you'll switch to the high card and win. If uh, you turn over the high card, it's going to be greater than z, so it'll look high and you'll know to stick with it. So in this case, you're, gonna, you're guaranteed to win. If you were lucky enough to guess the right threshold between low and high, you're going to win. And uh, so the probability that you win given the middle case occurs is one. Now what about the middle case? How often does that happen? Well, the difference between low and high is at least one. So there's guaranteed to be one chance in seven that your z is going to fall between them. And it, it could be more if low and high are further apart, but as long as they're at least one apart, there's a one-seventh chance that you're going to fall in between them. Okay. Now, in case h, that's the case where z happens to be chosen greater than or equal to the high number that team 1 chose. In other words, z is bigger than both numbers that team 1 chose and put on the pieces of paper. Well, in that case, z just isn't telling you anything. So what's going to happen is that both numbers are going to look high to you. Um, uh, sorry, both numbers are going to look low to you because they're both less than or equal to z. So you'll switch. Uh, and that means that uh, you'll win if and only if you happen to low, uh, turn the low card over first. Well, that was 50-50. So the probability that you win, given that um, uh, z, both cards are on the wrong side of z, on the, on the low side of z, you win with half the time. And symmetrically, if z is less than the low card, that is z is less than both cards chosen by team one, then they're both going to look high, and so you'll stick. And that means that you'll stick, you'll win if and only if you happen to have picked the high card. There's a 50-50 chance of that. So again, in this case, that z uh, makes both cards look high, um, or z itself is low, uh, team two, you win with probability a half. Well, that's great, because now we can apply total probability. And what total probability tells us is that team two wins um, the... Uh, uh, is the probability that they win given case M times the probability of M plus the probability that they win given not the middle case times the probability of not the middle case. But we figured out what these were, or at least inequalities on them, because um, there's probability one that you'll win a seventh of the time, and there's probability a half that you'll win the other, the rest of the time, the other six sevenths of the time you're going to win four-sevenths of the time. The probability that you win playing your strategy is four-sevenths. It's better than 50-50. You have an advantage. And whether that was a priori obvious or not, I don't know, but I think it's kind of cool. Okay, you win with probability four-sevenths. Now, um, Team 2 has the advantage, and, it, and the important thing to understand is it does not matter what Team does. No matter how smart Team 1 is, um, Team 2 has gotten control of the situation because they picked the which piece of paper they picked at, at random 50-50. So it doesn't matter what stra strategy Team 1 used on where they placed the numbers. And they chose Z randomly. So uh, it, again, it doesn't matter what numbers Team 1 chose. Team 2 is still going to have their uh, one-seventh chance of coming out ahead, which is enough to tip the balance in their favor. 
it's interesting that symmetrically, team one also has a random strategy that they can use, which guarantees that no matter what team two does, uh, they, team two wins with probability at most four sevenths. So either team can force the probability that team two wins to be uh, at most four sevenths and at least four sevenths. So if they both play optimally, it's going to stay at four sevenths. And that's again true no matter what team two does, team one can put this upper bound of four sevenths on it. So, and essentially we can say that the value of this game, the probability that team two wins is, uh, is optimally for both is four sevenths. Okay, now what has this game got to do with anything, uh, with our general topic of random variables? Well, uh, we'll be formal in a moment, but informally, a random variable is simply a number that's produced by a random process. And just to give an example before we come up with a formal definition, the threshold variable z was a thing that took a value from 0 to 6 uh, inclusive, each with probability 1 seventh. So uh, it was uh, producing a number by a random process that chose a number at random with equal probability. Um, if uh, the uh, team 2 plays uh, properly, uh, at, at, uh, at random, uh, picking which piece of paper to expose, then the number of the exposed card, or more precisely, whether the exposed card is high or low, will also be a random variable. Um, and if team one plays optimally, the number on the exposed card is going to be uh, a random variable. That is, team one in their optimal strategy that puts an upper bound of four sevenths is in fact going to choose uh, the two numbers randomly. So the exposed card was going to wind up being another random variable, a number produced by the random process, and likewise the number of the larger card if team one play picks its larger and smaller cards randomly. It's going to be another example of a number produced by a random process, and likewise the number of the smaller card. So that's enough examples. This little game has a whole bunch of random variables appearing in it, and in the next segment we will look again officially what is the definition of a random variable.